Our next uh, speaker is going to be Mike Reardon to talk about the uh, life and surgical hero, hero of Denton Cooley. Dr. Richards, Dr. Schweitzberg, and members uh, and guests, thank you so much for allowing me to present this video and speak a little bit about my teacher and mentor, Dr. Denton Cooley. Uh, Houston has always had a prominent place in the world of heart surgery. That's because of Dr. Cooley. Uh, he brought heart surgery not just to Houston, uh, but to the world. And we wanted to capture this because those of us who've worked in heart surgery all their lives, like I have, have known the incredible surgical achievements but many people don't know what a great personal man Denton Cooley is. So if we can roll the video. Yeah, we. The possibility has now been established uh, as a reality, the fact that Mr. Carp uh, has regained uh, organ function in terms of cerebral function and kidney function in the case that it's a mechanical heart is a feasibility. Uh, there's much to be done now. This is much like embarking on the space program. We know that a rocket will go up off the uh, surface of the Earth, but uh, we haven't set foot on the moon yet. He's performed more open heart operations than anyone else in the world, more than 4,000, 10 to 12 in an average working day. I'm inclined to be optimistic about the heart as a transplantable organ, and I believe that it has more uh, resistance to some of these rejection forces. For the first time, we were able to demonstrate that an artificial device uh, could maintain uh, circulation in a human being uh, for a period of uh, more than uh, six or eight hours, which has been the limit uh, with the other devices. He wasn't a good surgeon. He was a magical surgeon. I mean, everything he does, he does well. He's genuinely kind and caring. Just a wonderful person. Well, first of all, being a surgeon myself, the first thing I noticed was what a great surgeon he was. I mean, all surgeons are judging you by whether you can operate. Are you a good surgeon? Are you not a good surgeon? He wasn't a good surgeon. He was a magical surgeon. I think Dr. Cooley is a unique individual, though, that uh, had the talent and uh, the abilities. I mean, if you look at his other abilities, I mean, he was a talented athlete, excellent golfer, excellent shooting birds. I mean, everything he does, he does well. I mean, obviously, because he would take on challenges that nobody else wanted to do, from children to adults, that somebody's got to keep pushing it back. He did things that almost couldn't believe. And in fact, as his resident, you would watch him do something a couple times, and then he'd let you try it. And all of a sudden, what looked so easy for him to do wasn't so easy to do. But he'd help you until you got it down. Uh, I think that uh, we hit upon the best uh, technique of doing cardiac transplant and employed this in our first uh, case. As a matter of fact, we have not modified this technique uh, since the first case we did. Well, it's going to be difficult to get an artificial heart to compete with the uh, efficiency of heart transplantation as we know it today. We could not even conceive that people would live for 20 or 30 years with a heart transplant and back in those days. But uh, today it's almost routine for patients to live for five or ten years after heart transplant. So the first thing I noticed about him was he was a great technical surgeon and he was a great teacher. Ben Cooley was an entrepreneur before the word entrepreneur was really a cool buzzword. I and mean, if you look at it, he has 60 surgical first inventions and things that he's brought to the world. Of course, a little proprietary, but I would argue he was there to dawn of heart surgery, not just congenital heart surgery. You know, being at the table with Dr. Blaylock, you know, going over that precipice of the idea that you could actually palliate congenital heart disease. Dr. Cooley was innovating for us before innovation was something that everybody sought for, which is part of his being. We had this wonderful and uh, new uh, opportunity to explore uh, things that uh, had not been 
I had done before. And finally, with the advent of the coming of open heart techniques, I, it was a new world. Uh, and there I was available uh, to participate. Dr. Cooley has made a, a tremendous number of contributions at first in the world of cardiovascular surgery. Of course, his skill, his dexterity, his ability to get these operations done quickly at a time when pericomary bypass was extremely unsafe really emboldened people because uh, he was able to demonstrate he could actually get this done. And as we all know, uh, others were discouraged early in that era. All the way from artificial hearts and transplants to vascular surgery to ventricular aneurysms, cardiovascular disease, and particularly congenital heart surgery. Which I think is his first and greatest love is, is the children. He, uh, in his partnership with Dan McNamara, who was our chief of pediatric cardiology unit, they really started to tackle uh, newborn heart surgery at a time where that was a highly controversial issue. Texas Children and the Texas Medical Center really was the epicenter for newborn heart surgery, and Dr. Cooley and his team really put a lot of points on the board with regard to, to aggressive intracardiac repair of small babies. Beyond that, I was shocked and really amazed at what a kind person he was. Surgeons are not always known for being kind, gentle, warm, fuzzy people. He generally cares for everybody. I remember times when I was a little girl, maybe 10, 11, 12, something like that, and following him through the hospital, um, and I'd watch him say hello to the elevator operator, I'd watch him pick up a piece of trash on the floor, you know, and just kind of put it in his pocket or, or throw it away on down the hall, not say a word. Just kind of was minding what he thought was his shop. So I think that he's been a role model for other people doing that also. Dr. Cooley is kind. He's got a very big heart. He is one of the hardest working people that I've ever known. It went from just hearing about the man to thinking he was wonderful and then actually getting to meet him and being a friend and find out uh, what a wonderful person he was, not just um, what a wonderful career he had and how, what a great surgeon, but he took an interest and actually knew who I was and spent time and you know, was a very, very good advisor to me early in my career. Well, you know, Dr. Cooley is usually pretty gracious about everything, so his advice is always, you got to get along to get ahead. So, you know, work well with uh, pediatricians and pediatric cardiologists, and that's, you know, has served as well. And Dr. Cooley has always been a wonderful philanthropist. If somebody couldn't afford to have heart surgery, he just did it for free. He wants to help. He's always, he's always been that way. He's quiet about it sometimes. He truly admires everyone who works here. And that, you just don't see that anywhere else in the world. I think it makes the Texas Heart Institute exceptionally special. I would never leave Dr. Cooley. Because you know, he creates that environment that you just don't want to leave it. It's, it's a very special place. But Dr. Cooley makes it a home. And he treats everyone like part of, a member of his family. How do you summarize a person whose name essentially remains a household name in American medicine, or maybe in worldwide medicine. One of my favorite stories I heard recently came from a friend of mine, Paul Corso, another heart surgeon in Washington, D.C. Paul was one of the, one of the surgeons who started off pump coronary bypass. And he was talking to Dr. Cooley, and he said, Dr. Cooley, at one time, I knew everybody in the U.S. doing off pump coronary bypass. Dr. Cooley looked back at Paul and said, you know, Paul, at one time, I knew everybody in the world doing heart surgery. The heart surgery has grown exponentially around the world because of the hard work of Dr. Cooley and his colleagues training other people. I think it's fair to say that Dr. Cooley no longer knows personally everybody in the world doing heart surgery. But Dr. Cooley, everybody in the world doing heart surgery knows you, knows your contributions, and knows the Texas Heart Institute that you built. Thank you for all of us. Although we, don't, although we don't have Dr. Cooley in the room physically with us, he actually is working today. He works every Monday through Thursday, and he's live on the phone uh, to make comments and to answer uh, any questions. But it, uh, it's been a, a real thrill uh, getting to know somebody like Dr. Cooley, who really is uh, somebody who put uh, not just Houston on the map, but heart surgery in uh, almost every major city in the world.
So, Dr. Do we have him on the phone? We are live. Dr. Cooley? Oh. Uh, let me thank uh, everyone, especially Mike Reardon and his brother Pat, for preparing this presentation. Uh, Dr. Richards, I feel honored uh, and very grateful uh, for being able to have my story told before the Congress of uh, the American College of Surgeons. Uh, without a doubt, it is the most traditional and respected society of which we surgeons uh, belong. Looking back on my career, I uh, find some uh, rather standard things. I have uh, been uh, involved uh, with this wonderful era of cardiovascular uh, surgery, but dating back to the early 1940s when I graduated from Johns Hopkins Medical School until the present time. This is a glorious uh, five decades of progress. Prior to that, surgeons had uh, suffered under all the admonitions of predecessors about leaving the heart alone, that it was not meant for surgical manipulation. I think with the advent of certain basic procedures in congenital heart disease, such as coarctation, uh, patent ductus arterios, and especially uh, the operation devised by Dr. Uh, Blaylock and Helen Taussig, known as the Blaylock Taussig operation. And I was privileged to be part of that team. And from that day forward, I have been involved uh, in uh, the pursuit of cardiovascular surgery. That's been an interesting era. I like to compare it uh, with uh, space travel. Uh, I feel like some of us who were considered pioneers were similar to the astronauts. Uh, we knew uh, we had a lot of technology and support behind us, uh, but we were obliged uh, to do the best uh, that we could. Throughout my whole uh, career, and as I spent my career in an academic uh, atmosphere or environment, and I have uh, had the opportunity to uh, train uh, many uh, young surgeons who are interested in uh, surgery and particularly cardiovascular surgery. I must say I'm grateful to many of those uh, who inspired me and spurred me on uh, to take uh, chances. Many opportunities arose uh, during that era, and uh, few of us had the, the, abil the ability or the inspiration uh, to seize on those opportunities. Look back upon the beginning of open heart surgery with the replacement of various defective parts of the heart to the final time of replacing uh, the entire heart uh, during those exciting years of early cardiac transplantation. And then I also had the opportunity to uh, implant uh, the first total artificial heart which was a, a great uh, uh, opportunity of which I uh, am pleased to have been involved. But throughout my career, I have uh, enjoyed uh, many uh, introductions or innovations uh, in surgery uh, from uh, infants and patients who are infants up until the very elderly. But as I look back on my career, I believe the best thing that I will be remembered for is creation of the Texas Heart Institute, which has two stated objectives of research and education, but also has played a very uh, important role uh, in uh, clinical development of heart uh, and, and vascular surgery. It is my great pleasure at the age of 94 years that I am still able to 
uh, address this group. And I'm extremely grateful to all of you and hope that you uh, have enjoyed uh, my story. Thank you very much. Okay. Dr. Cooley, this is uh, Bill Richards. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Bill. Well, thank you very much for those comments. We're so honored that you were able to converse with us on the phone uh, today. In your estimation, where do you think heart surgery is going in the future? Well, it's changing so much, uh, Bill. Uh, you know, uh, having listened to that predecessor, on this program about uh, uh, laparoscopic uh, uh, medicine and surgery and other uh, recent developments, it's kind of hard to predict uh, where what I call standard heart surgery is going to uh, develop. But I think that uh, we'll always need well-trained uh, surgeons in doing uh, standard types of uh, surgical procedures. Not everything can be done laparoscopically, uh, and uh, I think we still have to train surgeons to be good technical sur surgeons. You know, one, one thing, Bill, that it's hard to get by in a very short presentation like this, and you really have to work with Dr. Cooley to, to see this, is his wonderful sense of humor. Uh, somebody once asked him, Dr. Cooley, have you lived your whole life in Houston? He looked at him and said, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I have a few more years, Mike, and I do appreciate your uh, help in this program. I'm proud of your career also. Uh, Dr. Fussberger? Huber? Yeah, Dr. Cooley, it's, um, you, you don't remember me at all, I'm absolutely sure, but I wanted to kind of give the perspective of a young resident that did his training in Houston at UT, and Dr. Capusta one day approached me, I was in the third year, and he said, I need your help today in the OR. Dr. Cooley is coming over and is operating on this eight-year-old Jehovah's Witness, and we are doing an open-heart surgery I want you to be in the room and not say a word and not move. And we went into this room and I, I don't, I will never forget the aura that you placed in that room and the absolute incredible, I've never seen it since and I've never seen it before, technical ability to do the nodding on the heart while you were not even, <laughs> quasi not even looking, just talking to Dr. Capusta about your fishing trip, and the quietness and <laughs> sereneness of that operation, I will never forget. Thank you so much for participating in this session. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Wow, that's an incredible comment. Is there another comment? I think that's it. Thank you, Dr. Cooley. Have a great day. 